coming back, trying to get his conditioning right, his leg better, and can that last three and a half minutes kind of be a lift for him? You think? Scoop, we all sit down. No, it definitely can. Um, you know, just getting his legs you know, back up under him is going to be huge for him. Uh, obviously, he wasn't with us the uh, entire time in training camp. So I think it's a big uh, boost of confidence for him. Just, you know, continue to get in shape and continue to get in game play. But, you know, for all of us, even in our first three, we've been you know, sloppy at times. We just need to continue to get better throughout that. What do you think happened in the fourth quarter? That was pretty rough on you guys. Uh, you know, especially after talking uh, that we took a big step in the right direction last night growing up uh, tonight. I wouldn't say we took a step back. We just were a little, um, I guess, complacent in, in, in what we we're doing. We let them get back in the game. And, uh, you know, it's been so many times we've been so good at putting teams away. And, you know, tonight we weren't able to do that. So, you know, look at film. We got to clean up a lot of things. We're very sloppy. And, uh, you know, shots we... Usually Meg didn't, didn't fall. Defensively, we weren't great. So, um, you know, just need to be better. <laughs> Could you fix it? Uh, this team working the way it does without having JR. Say again. Can you fix it? This team working the way it does without having JR. He's, uh, JR is the lifeblood of our team, man. We got guys like, you know, him and, uh, you know, Champ, uh, Tristan, um, uh, Channing, RJ, you know, guys like that that bring so much to this team uh, on and off the floor. So, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't run like it does without JR. JR is a special player for us. Kev obviously hasn't happened a lot in your career as we were talking about, but what's, what's it like when you have to play through that foul trouble? Uh, not fun. So, <laughs> uh, you know. You know, we'll see that very often. So just, you know, I, I wish it was on stuff I was super aggressive on, but a couple of them seem to be a little. Hey, you fouled out. Don't lose money, too. Yeah. Don't lose money, too. <laughs> well, let's just say well, that won't happen very much, I don't think. Are you guys watching the evenings at all when it's up on the scoreboard? It's on the jumbo trial. You're showing it during timeouts. Are you guys catching glances up there? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, they throw it up on the jumbotron, and you know, the crowd's going wild. They haven't inbounded the ball yet, so you kind of want to look up and see what's going on. And you know, we've been to three games now, and um, you know, we're big fans too. So, you know, of course, that catches our attention. But you know, that's not why we lost our league. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we're big fans. We we want them. To win. I mentioned that he's planning to take you out a little bit earlier in the first quarter so that you can then finish and you can be the focal point of the offense. How does that help you get more comfortable? Uh, just being super aggressive, I think, more than anything, because uh, in the first unit, so much of the time I'm a floor spreader. So uh, I think that and also because, you know, towards the end of the quarters, uh, we're in the bonus most of the time, so uh, I think that definitely helps somebody like me get uh, in pulse position and, and continue to be aggressive. So you took matters into your own hands there in the, in the fourth quarter. Did you feel that you had to be that igniter at that point? Um, no, I mean, the guys just set the table for me. You know, it was just time for me to eat. Uh, I was playing around with the ball a little bit too much the last three games, actually. And uh, at the halftime, they came in and just said, you know, just catch and shoot. I mean, they close out. After they close out hard, after you make you know two, three, then you know get to go to get to a uh, side step, step back or whatever, and uh, just overthinking. So just unfortunately, I have to use these games as my preseason game, so I'm getting used to it. Is that part of it? You know, trying to get caught up on the fly. Yeah, um, I mean, like I said, practicing by yourself pretty much. Uh, it doesn't really. I mean, it helps you get better with your workouts, but there's nothing like playing against competition. And, you know, guys closing out to you and contesting and stuff like that. So just getting reacclimated uh, and back with, you know, playing against people. Ty also mentioned before the game that he thought conditioning was playing a role in some of your early shooting problems, in part because you were playing so hard. So you didn't have enough left just because of how hard you were playing defensively. But then you have those three late shots. So, I mean, how do you feel from a conditioning standpoint? No, I mean, I feel pretty good now. Um, it was, it's, it, obviously, it's tougher playing against, you know, the the Rosens and those type of guys. Uh, as I try to, I mean, my whole defensive mindset, you know, try to not let those guys catch the ball. I mean, that's when they're most dangerous, when they have the ball in their hands. So, um, but, I mean, it's, it's getting back. Um, I mean, I just, 
you know, I got great teammates to go against in practice, so they, they pretty much get me up to speed pretty fast. When you hit that third three, you kind of spun around and put your arms out and pushed it in from the crowd when you had a uh, block on the baseline. That's Carlos said it's in a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> when you had a block on the baseline, you also kind of got the crowd into it. At any point uh, this summer when you were going through your contract stuff, did, did you think about what it would be like not to have that connection to this crowd, like the Cleveland fan base that seemed to embrace you from the start? No, um, I mean, I knew I knew whether it was this jersey or another jersey, they would still embrace me and still feel the same way. Um, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a great fit for me, myself, the fans, the community, um, the way they open up to me and the way I open up back. So uh, it's just, uh, just I would say, a perfect fit. That put back dunk got the attention of uh, the crowd too. Don't expect me at all. So I'm letting you know right now. <laughs> Honestly, the only reason why I went in there is because we had so many guys around the perimeter, and I just figured I'd help steal a rebound or something. So I don't expect too many of those. I'm getting too old. <laughs> on the court, um, when you were talking to Ahmad, you apologized for the fourth, for the fourth quarter. What what do you think went wrong there? We just got too complacent. Um, we can't uh, to be a championship team to be the team we are you know we come out and before we step on the court in the first quarter we you know we're in the huddle we tell we're telling us you know we're we can't let a team like this stay in the game with us we got to be better we got to be better we got to be better and uh, we just we weren't you know we got we got our 20 point cushion and you know just start and fade away jumpers jumper 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 instead of attacking and being putting pressure on the defense uh, pressure on them on the defensive end and then them coming back to just in the flow of their offense you know everything is so easy we just start getting lax we start fouling then they get to the free throw line and they slowing the game down which if you're down 20 that's what you want and uh, for us we can't do that we can't we can't let guys like that or a team's quote unquote that's not at our talent level be in the game with